Gentlemen, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number eight at Woodbine, the kickoff leg of a 20 cent pick four on Saturday. It's the grade two Bessarabian stakes. Let's take a peek at this field. Phillies and mares going seven eighths of a mile on the tapita surface. And you can bet this race with DRF bets. I'm fascinated by this race, Mike, because you've got surface changes, horses cutting back in distance and kind of a curious pace scenario. Yeah, I agree with all that stuff. It's a it's a really nice mix of horses in here. Not um, necessarily the field I was expecting when I saw this race was carded, um, but it's certainly a good one. It's a very interesting betting race. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. They have the three spun glass stretching out off a couple of five, five and a half furlong turf races on the lead. But spun glass is far from a blazer. The eight Emma line might be able to make the lead. I think she's kind of a stalker. Gajetta, the one came from far back last time out. There's a chance this pace is kind of slow. Yeah, I wonder um, if it's going to play out the way the pace projector sees it, I, which I guess is possible. I, I I think the key to the pace might be the number four, uh, Lady Spite Spear. She's making her um, synthetic track debut here. She's cutting back a little bit in distance for just her second start of the year. But she's got speed, and I wonder if, there's, if they're going to try to use it here. I agree. I think Lady Spite Spear, the four, as well as the seven, the morning line favorite, our secret agent, who showed sort of improved early interest in her last two starts. Maybe they can stay close to the pace. But let's start with the Southern California Invader, the number one Gidgetta, scoring a non-winners of two other then going six furlongs on turf at Santa Anita. Let's watch that race right now. And she was far behind, but they were going fast. And that helped Gidgetta get up just in the shadow of the wire and she beat a sharp horse this horse ag indy who looks home free ag indy is going to come back to win the senator ken maddie stakes with a 90 buyer this is a strong kick yeah good finish from this horse not only did the uh, the runner up there come back to win that stake but she had also won her prior two starts she was so she was in good form coming into the race and good form coming out of it um i thought this horse ran well in there you know she's going to sur switch surfaces here she's already won on dirt she's already won on turf I mean, I guess it suggests that she's versatile enough to handle this too, Dan. I would never take the three to one morning line on her, but I guess she could win. Has a bullet work on synthetic. Not sure the running style that she utilized last time will work, but she's shown in prior races the ability to adapt and be a bit closer to the pace. La Liberté is the number two for trainer Mark Cassie, and I thought she ran an underrated race last time out in the grade three Hendry when beaten by our secret angel. It was a race where there wasn't a ton of pace. She was coming from near the back of the pack, and she finished up okay to be third. The start didn't work out for her. Her race prior to that was a good effort going five on the synth yeah another horse who's going to want to um, try to make up some ground in the stretch here so we'll see if the race sets up the right way for her. i thought she ran okay last time too um just sort of lost position there as they came up to the top mm -hmm. of the stretch and wound up last um she had room she had she was between horses through the stretch but she had room in there um just got out finished for second but i got out finished for second by a very good horse Spun Glass scored two starts back at Colonial for Michael Trombetta, and congratulations to the Trombetta Barn, recently winning their 2,000th race. That was a useful effort, two back, broke well, tipped off cover in the upper stretch, and just got up. Let's watch her most recent start, a third-place finish to a legitimately good turf sprinter in Robin Sparkles. And you see, she sat the pocket trip here. She's kind of waiting for somewhere to run and she's going to eventually get a split and get up for third she's in good form right now uh the seven's the big question for me she has run well on synth yeah she her only other start on synth was a win um last summer as a three-year-old at Presque Isle so you know we'll see what happens as they switch her back I don't know Dan um mm -hmm. I, I'm not really thrilled with the form I realized that she was in a little bit of uh, traffic there in the upper stretch but she was clear with time and I didn't really see her finishing very hard in that race I think she has to improve by a lot Lady Spitespear, what an interesting placement for Lady Spitespear, who's three for three in her career. And one of those wins was the grade one Natalma going a one turn mile on turf as a two year old. Now, a lot of this family is brilliant. A lot of this family has class and a lot of this family has physical problems. And Lady Spitespear missed about a year. And she came back off the layoff in this race going a mile and a 16th. And the connections had to be pleased that this race likely didn't take much out of her because Emma Jane Wilson was able to walk the dog up front. Yeah, they let her have the early lead in this race and didn't really come after her until they got into the turn there. Um, we're picking it up in the stretch. She's already put away the number two there, Nantucket Red, who took a run at her around the turn 
Um, Lady Spikespear put that horse away, stays very gamely to the end. Um, I thought all in all, it was a very useful runoff of a long layoff. And she had to work just hard enough, I think, to get something out of it. She was clear to the wire. I think she probably did take a step forward there. And I don't see why she can't improve. Again, there are big questions here with, you know, the surface switch and the step back up in class. But uh, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if she was good enough. She beat two next out winners in that race. The runner up coming back to win with a 91 buyer and a three other then. It's all about synth. Turn back, I'm not too worried about. She has missed some time since the last race, about two months. Aug loots the fives. A horse that I've been following uh, uh, based in the Mid-Atlantic for Michael Trombetta. Started her career really well, winning her first three starts with a layoff thrown in. And then she scored in New York on the turf last time out. Her grass debut, the Glen Cove. Let's watch that. That race. I mean, she got the right pace set up. Jose Lascano has got her moving at the right time. She's going to alter course to the far outside. But I do like how she inhaled these horses in only a matter of strides and is getting away late. Yeah, this was a good setup for her, but I, I'm with you. I like the way she finished in here. I like the way that Lascano just wheeled her out there in the stretch. She powers over this field in the late stages and is going away at the end. I like this performance. I thought she ran great two starts back. Over this course and distance in the Duchess, Dad, I mean, she basically had an impossible trip that day behind a wire-to-wire -wire winner. I thought she ran really well to be second. Um, I, I like this horse in this race. The Connections have done a fine job with the number six juxtaposed. Just consider she graduated for a $15,000 tag. She's now graded stakes placed based on this race, a third place effort in the Ontario Matron. And I really couldn't find the excuse in here. Uh, the pace was very slow, as you can see, 49 and four to the half. She has the lead in mid stretch and she just isn't able to hold on. Yeah, I agree with you. I didn't, there's no real excuse here. She did her very best uh, with the trip that she had in here, and it, it's not quite enough. The cutback, I don't mind for her. I think it could actually work for this horse. She has tactical speed, so she should be up close, and she'll probably be a price again, so I'm not going to argue with her. After six stakes placings, the seven Our Secret Agent finally broke through. Let's watch Our Secret Agent's most recent race. First time blinkers, she felt pretty in blinkers. She got right up close to a moderate pace, 46 seconds to the half. And Our Secret Agent is going to sprint on home, a 93 buyer speed figure. That's not an anomaly. She has run fast races in the past, and her tactical speed puts her in good stead. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think she's the horse to beat in this race. I think she's going to get a, another good trip. She got a great trip in that race we just watched, but she really finished it off, too. Um, I think she maybe did improve with blinkers on. But, I mean, when you start picking her form apart, too, I mean, it just feels like every time they sprint her on synthetic, she comes up with a pretty big effort. Um, I, she's the morning line favorite. I think she's the horse to beat. When the other maidens, the other seven maidens, walked into the paddock at Woodbine on October 14th, they couldn't be happy to see Emmeline there. She'd finished second in the Woodbine Oaks, second in the Bison City, and she towered over the field. Let's watch Emmeline finally win her maiden after those uh, stakes placings, and she won it rather easily. She makes the frontier, and she's on her way. But I wonder if this 80 buyer speed figure is the plateau. She still has some scope for improvement, but it's been nine starts, and she's hit an 80 buyer in her last four synthetic races. Right. Hasn't broken through yet, but has to break through uh, to beat this field. I still feel like she's a horse that you could use somewhere in here. Um, needed that class relief. I liked the idea of cutting her back to seven for that race too, Dan. I thought she ran well. Another really interesting entrance, the nine tuned. Graham Motion has just gotten her good at the right time and has placed her in the right spots. Three consecutive victories, including this race at odds on and the all along at Laurel, where she just traveled comfortably throughout, made a bid on the turn. And as you can see, she's really the only one doing any serious running. Her three year old stablemate, Oyster Box, who's okay, is going to get up for second. What an interesting spot for tuned in her 15th lifetime story. Start. You've got to think she's nearing retirement. She'll be six next year. She's going to sprint for the first time. She's going to run on synth for the first time. Yeah, they're going to cut her back for this race. It is very interesting place. And I don't know. I'm trying to decide, Dan, if um, her last three races are a result of her improving or of motion just finding really good races for her. I mean, I guess it's probably a little bit of both. Um, she can win this race. I would want a pretty big price if I was going to bet her. I haven't been her biggest fan. We take a look at our top picks for the grade two best Arabian, and I'm stunned. Not only do we have the same top pick in Aug Lutz, who ran a fast race last time out, we got the same super in order, 5749. I think Aug Lutz still has some upside. 
Yeah, I do too. I just like her last two races a lot. Um, and I feel like if she can run one of those two races back here, she's going to be a strong contender. I'm not way against the favorite. I think the seven is the horse to beat in here, Dan. But if that morning line's close to right, I'm betting the five. Pace might make the race in the grade two Bessarabian at Woodbine on Saturday. We're both going to go with the five, all glutes. Good luck.